OK, so ladies and gentlemen, what we did last class period, what, or I'm sorry, what we did last example is we worked from taking an equation that was in this format. This is what we call standard form. All right, in standard form was ax squared plus bx plus c. So what we did is we took an equation that was in standard form, and by completing the square, what we did is we wrote it into vertex form. Right? And you, so you just follow the same process of completing the square, but then you go from standard form to vertex form. Now, why is it even helpful? Because like, we already know how to graph this. We know how to find the vertex. We know how to find the axis of symmetry. Right? We, all, we already learned how to do all that stuff from standard form. Remember, it was all equations. Axis symmetry was opposite of b divided by 2a. To find the vertex, it's opposite of b over 2a is the x-coordinate. You plug that in, and you evaluate for your function, and you get the y-coordinate. Right? And then we learned how to graph it by plotting points, plugging in x and y, or plugging in x, evaluating to find the value of y. But it was kind of a lot of work. Right? It was kind of a lot of work, and you guys can see I broke up the homework into like eight different assignments just on how to do, the sta how to do standard form. So why would we even want to spend our time completing the square to put an equation into vertex form? Well, I'll tell you a very important reason. Well, we know that x and y are coordinate points on your graph. Those are what are going to be making up your graph. Well, let's take a look at what does a, h, k, and h comma k tell us about a parabola. Okay? A is one thing that's going to tell that's going to tell you if my graph is going to be stretched. So that means if you're going to stretch or compress the graph. All right? It's not linear, so we're not going to be dealing with a constant slope of a graph cuz right it's quadratic, so it's not going to have the same slope. But when we're dealing with A, that's going to tell if it's stretched or compressed. And we talked about that in previous chapters. Remember when, when you multiply it by a value greater? And, um, that, so it's going to deal with, yeah, it's a dilation, exactly. A is also going to tell us, tell us if we're going to have a reflection. Right? So A also tells us if we have a reflection. And the way that it works if, if A is less than 0, that means we reflect the x-axis. All right? And the other one that works out if a, if the absolute value of a is less than 1, then our graph is stretched horizontally. And if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then our graph is compressed horizontally. All right, so those are important things. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at A, and if it's less than 0, that means it's negative, then that means you're going to reflect it over the x-axis. Cody, that's important. Yeah. Then you look at the absolute value of it. So forget if it's positive or negative. If it's less than 1, that means the graph is stretched horizontally. And if it's greater than 1, then it mean, that means it's going to be compressed horizontally. Now let's go and look at H. H is going to tell you if you're going to um, shift the graph left or right. So it's going to be a translation. So it's going to be translate or shift left and right. All right. But remember, it's x minus h. So remember, guys, remember when we always said looked in the function? We said, oh, it's minus, but you shift it to the right. So always remember, it's kind of like you're going in the opposite direction. right? So it shifts it left or right. But remember, you can see it's opposite of h. So you're always going to go in kind of the opposite direction. So if, it's la so if it's negative, you shift to the right. If it's positive, you shift to the left. So I always sometimes just kind of like write opposite for me just to kind of remember. It's always in the opposite direction. And k shifts your graph or translates up, down. Okay, So k is going to tell you where you're going to shift your graph up or down. All right. And then guess what HK is? HK is your vertex. All right? So do you guys remember when I asked you how to find the vertex of your first quiz? And you guys were like, oh, man, I have to do opposite of B divided by 2A, find that number. Then i got to plug that into the equation, find that number, and that's my vertex. Well, guess what? Let's take a look at an example. If I say Y equals negative 3, X plus 2 squared minus 1. Ne yes. So 
Let's say I, I, look, I give you this example problem. Let's kind of run through real quick what I just went over, how we could describe this graph. First of all, we look at A. Since it's less than 0, we could say that this graph reflects the x-axis. Since the absolute value of A is greater than 1, we can say this graph is compressed horizontally. Then we look at H and K. We could say that this graph is shifted two units to the left, and the graph shifts down one unit. We also can say that the vertex, which is going to be the maximum point, right? because remember our A, our A is just like in our standard form A. Our A is less than 1, or sorry, A is less than 0, so therefore our vertex is going to be a max. But we could say our vertex, which is a max, is at negative 2. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, negative 2, um, negative 1. OK? So you guys have a vertex, and then you can determine what the vertex is. So what I'd like you guys to do, now that you have this, is flip over your quiz and complete the square.